Here, the skin of the scrotum and the superficial fascia has been removed so that we can get a better view of the spermatic fascia, which happens to include a muscle, which is a continuation of the internal oblique muscle, and this muscle is called the cremaster muscle. You can see it represented here by these intertwining red or pinkish strands. The left testis in this model lies within a cavity that is lined by a smooth serous membrane, the tunica vaginalis. On the posterior of the testis, we will find a very long convoluted tube, which is referred to as the epididymis. The epididymis is a rather complicated structure. We can divide different sections of it into the head of the epididymis, which is right over here on the superior pole of the testis, the body, which is right over here, and finally, the end of the epididymis, which is called the tail. Right over here, we see the spermatic cord, and we can make out some of the structures that you find within the spermatic cord. We can follow it up back into the abdominal cavity as it enters through the external inguinal ring, going through an inguinal canal, and opening up through an internal inguinal ring. We can see that on the left side, the spermatic cord has been opened up to reveal some of the structures found within it. You can see that one of the structures is the ductus deferens, which is right over here. You have the red blood vessels, which are arteries, and they would represent the testicular artery and the artery that is supplying blood to the ductus deferens. And the veins, which you can see are interweaving in a very complex way, this vein is referred to as the pampiniform plexus. Entering through the external inguinal ring, you have the spermatic cord, and you could also see the cremaster muscle right over here. And here, the cord has been opened up so that we can better see the inguinal canal right here, going from about here to right over here. And at this location, the ductus deferens, which you can see right over here, and the testicular artery and the vein is going back into the abdominal cavity through the internal inguinal ring, which is located right over here. Now, if we look at the same structures on the other side, we again see the spermatic cord going through the external inguinal ring, through the inguinal canal, which is somewhat concealed, and then opening up at the internal inguinal ring. You can see right over here is the continuation of the ductus deferens. You can see where it's going. It's going to the posterior side of the urinary bladder, which is right over here, passing medially by the ureter, which is right over here.